Good morning, New Bethel. Again, it's an honor and a privilege to worship God with you. We hope that you're ready.
Good morning, family. Welcome to our church services again on this glorious day. It is a day that the Lord had made. The old people used to tell us to rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said unto me, come and let us go into the house of the Lord. It's another day's journey, and I hope that you're glad about it because God didn't have to wake us up this morning, but the old people used to say, but he did. And for that, we are thankful. I want to share <clears throat> with you uh, this morning uh, a story about uh, a young man who was different. And it's okay to be different. Our parents used to tell us that it's okay to be different. You don't have to fit in just because other people are doing something doesn't mean that you have to follow suit. So I, I, there is a story in the Old Testament about a young man who was different. He had <clears throat> siblings, but he was different. He was a son, but he was different. Uh, come on and go with me to First Chronicles chapter 4. First Chronicles chapter 4. Um, I want to begin reading uh, two verses in particular. In First Chronicles chapter 4, I want you to look with me in verse 9 and verse 10. Listen to what it says. It says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with me sorrow. For since as in Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Amen. <clears throat> I want to talk from this thought. Uh, it's okay to be different. Amen. It's, it's okay to be different. <clears throat> if you've ever read uh, fourth chapter in First Chronicles, you know that it, it's um, a chapter filled with genealogies and offsprings and relatives and a lot of these uh, names are hard to pronounce and for many people it may feel like it's uh, irrelevant in their spiritual growth to just know who begat who but uh, a lot of times when you really think about it we need to know who our relatives are yeah. we need to know who's related to us but in the process of learning in chapter 4 of 1 Chronicles who's related to whom, isn't it amazing that when you read this entire chapter and we get to verse nine, God pauses with the siblings and the genealogists and it's something different about this young man named Jabez. You talk about all of the people that came before him and all of the people that were relevant to his, 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 uh, his person. And in the middle of all of this, God pauses and simply says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brother. In the annals of time, in the biblical history, he shall be known for not only so much as him being different from his brethren, but he will be known because he prayed. I think in life, if, uh, we're going to be known by something and people are going to say things about us, uh, two-minute expressions at our home going. It would be a wonderful thing if somebody could just inject that they were faithful and they were honorable. Yes, yes, he will be forever known, uh, not only for being different from his brethren, but he will be known by simply praying and talking to God. Yes. His prayer is a prayer of familiarity. What, and, and somebody, if somebody was to ask, what is prayer? Prayer is simply a solemn, sincere request for help or an expression of thanks to God. I, listen to what I said. I said thanks to God. Uh, 
we we pray to God and he answers us because he loves us. But what do we know about this man, uh, Jabez? We know that he prayed. We know that he was more honorable uh, than his brothers. But he was well respected. He is a man who prays. And I think, if, uh, again, if anybody can give a testament to an individual, it would be a noble characteristic to somebody to know you and identify you with as being faithful. And they prayed. He's a man who prays, and not only that, he caused, we, we do know from reading that he caused his mother great pain while giving birth. We also know from reading that there was a city named after him, and we know he prayed because of verse 10. And it says that Jabez called on the God of Israel. That's a form of praying, and, and in our prayers, we mostly do two things when we pray. We mostly ask or we think. We, it's something that we're asking for or it's something that God has granted us and we thank him for it. Yeah. Listen to what Jabez is asking for initially. Most times when we pray, it is for different reasons. We all, we all hope we all pray as believers, but we don't all pray for the same thing. Hello? He, we, we all pray for different things. The old people used to say about coming to church, Lord, some are here for one thing, some are here for another. But we all love God, and we all have, ought to have some form of a prayer life because we say that we love God. But we pray because we either want something to happen or we pray because we don't want something to happen. Then we pray prayers of need. All of us in here have wants, hopes, aspirations, and needs. But we pray a lot of times because we have prayers of needs. We have learned the true meaning of Philippians chapter 4 and 19, which simply states that, but my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. Let me tell you this. His prayer is a prayer of asking. What is the first thing that Jabez wants? All of us, let me see a show of hands if you really want something in life. Jabez wants, he has wants. And the first thing that he wants, listen to what he says. The first thing, the initial thing that Jabez wants is he wants God to bless him. I don't know about you, but every day of my life, I, I'm asking for the rich blessings from my God. He wants God to bless him. He leaves this up to God. Notice this. In the process of him wanting God to bless him, he does not put parameters on how God will bless him, but he leaves it up to God. Yes. However you want to bless me, God, the saints of old used to say, any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. I don't have to put stipulations and parameters and ceilings on what God is going to do. Whatever God does, and the old people used to say, when somebody gives you something, it's more than what you had before they gave it to you. So I'm not putting parameters, I'm not putting stipulations on how God blesses me. Whenever and however he blesses me, it's going to be a blessing when it comes. Then watch this, notice his prayer is a petition for real estate. Did y'all hear that? He, 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 he's asking God for land. He's not asking God for some shiny diamond-studded chariot. He's asking for land. He's not asking for Louis Vuitton or Gucci or Michael Kors. He's asking for land because something about land, he knows that it is only the true real estate. He noticed, noticed that his prayer is a petition for real estate. He wants land. He wants God to enlarge his territory. And I think I need to tell you this, that if you don't know that owning land is a valuable commodity. Yes. Reason why it's so valuable, saints, is because they're not making any more land. Yes. It gives you a peace of mind when you know that you can look back when you have worked hard and say, this is what God has blessed me with. And it may not be big as yours, but it's mine. Watch this, he understands the human nature of man. When man is blessed, it can change a man's action. Yes, sir. Yeah, I don't know if you ever just walked around and just looked and observed people. You can always tell when you, when you run into the children of God. Right, right. It's something about 
the, 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 the way that a person handles themselves when they know God. They have something like a spiritual swag about themselves. When you can look at a person and just know that God is doing something wonderful in that person's life. They don't have to walk around with a big sandwich and a cardboard sign saying I love God and I'm a Christian. You will know that they love God by the way that they carry themselves. Jabez knows all too well that prosperity and position can swell a man's pride. You remember when someone that you didn't know didn't have anything and they were just living from hand to mouth and then they got a fourth of a blessing and now it changed them to where they look down their nose at you like as if they are better than you. But watch it, you don't have to be envious over the blessings of another person because if you just really think about it, you ought to be glad when somebody ahead of you gets their blessing so they can go ahead Ahead and move aside so you can be next in line. Touch your neighbor and say, my blessing is on the way. He, he, he noticed that, that, that sometimes blessings can change people, but Job, Jabez does not want this to happen to him. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be so blessed until I'm, I'm no earthly good. Jabez doesn't want this to happen to him, so he asked God, in the process of you blessing me, God, let your hand guide me. Because one thing about God's hand is that if I get too high and get puffed up in pride, his hand can bring me back down. And when I get so low in the dump because it seems like I can't make ends meet, his hand can raise me up and put me to where he wants me to be. So God, I want your hand to guide me. Yeah, thank God for his hand. Thank God for his hand. Many of our families are dysfunctional, but because we have taken the hand of God away, then watch this, it says, then Jabez understands, watch this, that wherever there are supporters, they're going to be haters. I don't want you to get it twisted, but everybody's not happy because God is doing some wonderful things in your life. People still want you on the bus stop. They still want you living from hand to mouth. They still are okay with you just paying rent and not being able to get a mortgage. Don't, don't, don't let anybody, listen to what I'm saying, don't let anybody downplay what God is getting ready to do in your life. Don't you let anybody quench your thirst as far as wanting to be quenched by the Spirit of God. Always remain grateful for the little things in life. I think I need to tell you this. That in, in, in Romans chapter 7, around about the 21st verse, it reminds us that every time I have a desire to do good, right it seems like evil is always present. But in all your doings, don't you ever allow people who don't know what you've been through uh -huh. to put a damper on you being yeah. thankful for what God has given you. It may not be what you think I ought to have. It may not be what you think I ought to have. It may not be as all that and paramount as what you think I ought to have. But the little things I appreciate God for. Sometimes you need to just thank God for the little things that he's done. And, and watch this. Then he asked one another thing. He asked the Lord to keep him from grief. You know, grief is a deep sorrow, especially that's caused by the death of someone that you care for. Jabez, watch this. He, he's concerned about the welfare and the lives of people that he cares about. He says that he doesn't want to go through grief, and we understand, but it will happen because also, grief has another meaning. Grief means trouble or annoyance. It's a form of harassment, such as the 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 the, uh, the way that sometimes people will give us grief. I didn't come here for it. I didn't come to to a complete stop, and the police get pulled me over because I didn't come to a police complete stop and he gave me a ticket and he wouldn't let me go. Sometimes that causes grief, but at the end of the day, you got to realize, did you really stop? Or did you just come to a slow creep? But watch this, I, I don't ever want to be the cause of somebody else's grief. He requests five things in one prayer. He asks for a lot in one verse. What's apparent to me is he must believe that God will grant what he asked for. I don't know about you, and I hope you don't take this out of context, but I wouldn't waste my time asking somebody for something, and I know they wouldn't go ever give it to me. But I pray to God because before I even pray to him, before I even say, our Father, I believe that what I'm praying for, God's going to give it to me. That's called faith. And watch this. Notice he, 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 he doesn't 
uh, narrow his blessings by asking for specifics. What he asks for initially will cover a multitude of desires. So he doesn't think shallow. A lot of times we are guilty of shallow thinking. He, 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 doesn't, he doesn't just limit his blessings to a big house. He does just not limit his blessings to a fine uh, chariot, gold or silver, and not fancy clothes. He does not put himself in that little small box, but he leaves the blessings. I think I need to tell you again. He leaves that up to God. Finally, you ever wonder why God showed Jabez favor? Right. Well, a lot of people used to say, well, you know, favor ain't fair. Well, it is fair if you're faithful. That's right. But watch this. Verse 9, is, he says that he was more honorable. Which suggests to me that his brethren that he had, they could have been as honorable as he was, but it seemed like he was different. And he took the step above to be even more honorable. Now, I, I, not, that's not saying that his brothers were not honorable. It just says that he was more honorable. That's what it says right there in verse number 9. Because he was destined for greatness, his mother bore him in pain. Then she named him Jabez. I think I need to tell all mothers and all fathers, will it on your children that it doesn't matter how much birth pain I had bringing you into this world, you need to look at them and decree that you are destined for greatness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So they, they say that, that again, I, I, I put some, some great news, I've got some great news for you but about what Jabez wants is not out of the ordinary. Every day, you are not just waste a day not wanting and desiring to be better today than you were on yesterday. Who wouldn't want these things that Jabez wants? Because he, he does th three things that I've done. He believes that God, he prays because he believes that God has the power to do what he has. Look what he says. He wants, he wants God to enlarge his territory that his hand might be with me and then thou would keep me from evil. Right, right. I don't need to tell you that. I told uh, the, 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 the people that were there the other day at Sister Sandra Small's home going and said something about trouble. I talked about a little bit about trouble and I said that uh, trouble has some characteristics. First of all, you don't have to go out looking for it. It'll find you. Yes, then the second thing I, 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 I talked about trouble is that trouble is not prejudice. Yes, sir. Everybody can experience trouble. Then there's something that I can shout about that last aspect about trouble is that it don't last always. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he, it says that the reason why he prays, I really believe this in my closing. I really believe that he prayed because he wanted something better in life. And we know that God answers prayer. Yes. And we know that prayer not only changes things, but prayer changes the conditions of things. If you want something in life, then learn how to ask for it. If you want something better in life, learn how to ask for it. The old people would be quick to tell you that a closed mouth never gets fed. So if you want something better in life, if you want to be better, if you want your, your territory enlarged, then you got to ask God for it. Don't waste your time praying on trivial things. Be specific in what you ask for. Tell God what you want. Ask him for it. And in the process of him blessing you, turn around and ask God, God be a blessing to my family. Yes. God bless my children. If you don't have an employment, ask God for it. If you don't have transportation, ask God for it. And one thing I love about it, where the good news is at the end. It's good that he asked God for things. It's really good that he prays for things. But the best news yet is found at the end when it says, and God. I don't know if anybody ever had some and God days that I, I didn't know how I was going to make it. I was down to my very last dime. And God didn't know how I was going to come out of this COVID situation. I didn't know if I was going to get sick. I didn't know if I was going to get well. And God. I've had some and God days. And the Bible says this is and God granted him that which he requested. 
Maybe a lot of times we're missing out on our blessings and we're missing out on what God has for us because we assume, we just assume that God knows what we need. When the Bible specifically tells us to ask what we want and ask it in the name of Jesus and it shall be done. I don't know who uh, I'm talking to this morning, but if, if it's you, then I need you to hear me. Some of you are sitting out here right now, and even at your homes, you're missing out on some things because you really haven't sincerely talked to God about it. If you're anything like me, you ought to have some hopes, some wants, some desires, some dreams, and some aspirations. There are some things that you want in your life to happen, not only in just in your life, but in lives of people that you care about. And they may not pray, but you might have to be the prayer for them. So with that being said, come on by your heads. Lord, we thank you again. We thank you because we have a prayer life. We thank you because you have been just that good of a God to us, with us, through us, and for us. God, I don't know what my neighbor's prayer is. <clears throat> I don't even know if they pray for me, but I want to pray for them. I don't even know if my family is praying for me. But I want to pray for them. Some of us, we don't have a job. We've been laid off. This COVID has affected all of us. <laughs> but we believe, God, that you will see us through it. We just wait a while. If we just hold on just a little while longer. So, Lord, I'm asking now that you would give me the faith and the perseverance to just hold on just a little while. And we love you. And we thank you so much. I don't call on you because you're hard of hearing. But I pray because I know that you love me. And you want what's best for me. And it's okay to be different. Just because I'm in the world. Doesn't mean that I have to be of the world. So I thank you. We bless your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Again, thank you this morning for being with us. And we hope that you have been, been blessed by this little teaching moment. And we love you and we'll see you real soon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Welcome again and again, good morning, good morning, good morning. We hope that you have been blessed by the word today because you can be different. You don't have to fit in with everybody and develop a prayer life. Uh, it is February 7th. It is a brand new month, a brand new Sunday, and it is the first Sunday in the month of February. And as you know, it is communion Sunday. So get yourselves up, get out of that bed, and come on over here and let's see one another. Let's let's embrace one another um, and let's do communion. We'll be doing that about 11 o'clock and I hope to, to see you there and come on because we know that it's just the right thing to do. And again, we direct your attention to our website, uh, www.nbbwe.org. And again, there are always wonderful people on there that would be more than happy to accept your gift from God. But anyway, I would really like to see you. I really want to see you. Lady and I, we're going to be here. We really want to see you. Come on by. You know how we do it. And I want to have communion with you. And I love you. And we'll see you real soon. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Peace for now. Bye-bye.